All right, welcome to class. I was sick for a very long time. I lost my voice for many days, but through a complex combination of medicine, I think I recovered my voice long enough just to record a video. And hopefully if there's any issues, I'll edit them out, like maybe me coughing or something. This is CS4510, uh, 3-2. And today we're gonna be uh, talking about something called uh, uh, CNF form. So recall a context-free grammar. Uh, a context-free grammar is uh, you have a set of rules such as A goes to you know B, C, D, E, and so on. And uh, the left hand always has one, and the right side always ha has any string of any number of uh, terminals or non-terminals, right? So CNF form uh, is a form of a context-free grammar. So it says, uh, we say, I'll write it this way. Uh, we say uh, context-free grammar is in uh, CNF form only if the rules are they look like this so we have one non-terminal all right over here we have one non-terminal to two non-terminals possibly the same or different or whatever we have a non-terminal to a single terminal and we possibly allow only the start state to go to epsilon and no other state Excuse me, no other uh, not terminal symbol. So those are the only rules allowed in a that is in Chomsky normal form. Uh, again, this was named after Chomsky, like everything else. Um, you might be questioning, well, why do we need this? Who cares? Well, they have certain properties which will be very useful for proofs later on. So, but before that, we get to that first. Uh, it might not be obvious, but every grammar, every context-free grammar can be put into Chomsky normal form. Every CFG um, can be transformed into a CNF form. Now the proof we're obviously going to do by algorithm. We're going to actually show you how to take a context-free grammar of any form, and we're going to apply it to uh, a grammar. So there are a number of ways you can present this, and it's actually kind of tricky. So I'm going to do it uh, this way. So there are four rules, really five, but you do the following uh, rules. So one is you can replace the start state, excuse me, the start non-terminal uh, with the dummy S0 goes to S, where S is the old start state and now S0 is the new start state. So you do this step first as a sort of pre-processing. Now the four rules, I'm going to say like this, so two, I'm not going to call it anything, but if you have a rule of the form, uh, let's say A goes to uh, little b, big C, little d, something like that. What you do is you replace this with the rules A goes to some something like Z, B, capital C, and then Z, D. And then you have the rules, you add the rules uh, C, B goes to B, and uh, Z, D goes to D. Right. So, this is not in Chomsky normal form. This is in Chomsky normal form. Right. Well, not yet, but we've we've done a, a, an additional step actually to 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 get closer to it. So that's one operation you can do. Another operation you can do is um, given a string of the form of only non-terminals. Let's say you have like a B, C, D, E. 
this is not Chomsky normal form, but what you can do is sort of recursively uh, add new dummies to make it into Chomsky normal form, right? So what we would do is something like, actually, we don't need this last one because this is going to be fine. So we would do something like A goes to uh, B, A1, and then A1 goes to uh, C, D, E. So we've sort of reduced the max length of the string here by one. And then we just sort of recursively do it until we're fine. So instead of doing this, we're actually going to say A1 goes to uh, C, A2, and then A2 goes to D, E, right? So then this puts us, this gives us a way to deal with arbitrarily length the right hand side of production rules into just uh, this. We do have a quite a big blow up here though in the number of non-terminals, but it's fine. So that was the second, third. Number four. If we have rules of the form like A goes to B, where B is a single uh, non-terminal, we can't pad it uh, or anything like this. But we what we do is we say, well, let's suppose if we had other rules like from B, like B goes to C, D, E, or something, what we would do is just delete B. So we would replace this whole thing with the rule A goes to, well, let's say A goes B goes to C, D, E, and uh, B goes to uh, A, B, or something. Right? So you replace it for all possible ways that B could go. So A goes to, not to B, but to what B would go to anyway. C, D, E, or A, B. And finally, the last uh, rule, which is a little the trickiest. If you have a rule like, uh, let's say B goes to Epsilon, and then A goes to, let's say, uh, let's say BC. Uh, let's say B goes to Epsilon or B goes to DEF. Right. We want to, we cannot have rules besides the start state going from uh, B goes to Epsilon. So what we would do is then we for replace it for all possible things by again deleting B. So this would go to A goes to, if it was Epsilon, A goes to C or A goes to D, E, F. So that, that's our way of deleting B. And we may have to repeatedly apply this, because what if we had the rule A goes to B, B? Right? Then that would be apply A goes to Epsilon, and then we would have to sort of replace, delete, Eps, uh, delete A, and then replace everything that uh, contains an A. Um, so these four rules you have to apply in an arbitrary order just as you see the grammar and you start replacing. One you always want to do first, just sort of heuristically, it's the, it, it stops you from accidentally destroying other things. Uh, two, you could the second rule you should probably do next because it's the easiest. It's like it's not going to ever uh, destroy anything, right? And then three through five, you just kind of have to choose and see. You're like, oh, okay, now I made a string longer than three. I have to go back and reduce my strings or or you know something like this um so if you apply these rules you will get a grammar in chomsky normal form and your next question might will be uh well first let's let's do an example before explaining more about chomsky normal form let's do a, a concrete example of uh, proving something converting a grammar into chomsky normal form let's do Something maybe like uh, 0 to the n, 1 to the m, 0 to the m, 1 to the n, or m, n are greater than or equal to 0. So, what's this grammar look like? We have a start symbol, we have 0, s, 1, or we go to, let's say, a. And then if we're at A, we go to uh, 1, A, 0, or Epsilon. So we like push this a couple times, and then we push this, and we're done. Uh, so let's convert this into Chomsky normal form. Step 1, 
we're going to add the rule s0 goes to s. Now, does this language accept epsilon? Well, n and m can both be 0, so yes. So we'll just say epsilon right at the beginning. It's one of the first things you can check. Then we're just going to copy the rules because we haven't made any other changes yet. Now the next thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to try and delete this uh, epsilon here. So we're going to do that by replacing A in all the rules we see with uh, what it would be like if we took that epsilon instead. So what we're going to get is uh, 0 goes to S or epsilon. Then let's do the A rule first just to make things uh, easier. So we'll say A goes to 1A. 1a0 or uh, 1a, excuse me, 10. And then using that, we can say s goes to uh, 0s1 or s goes to 1a0 or 10. And sort of here, we've also sort of implicitly removed the uh, single rule here. And uh, finally, well, we have two more steps. We have to get rid of all these uh, terminal symbols, and we have to break the strings up. So let's just uh, break the strings up. Let's say, well, let's let's do the terminal symbols first. We'll say three. We'll say s goes to s or epsilon. S goes to uh, z zero s z one or uh, z1 a c0 or one or excuse me z1 c0 or a goes to z1 a z0 or c1 C0. You might be thinking well this is actually making it more complicated and it's making it ugly. And yeah, actually, that's kind of the point. Chomsky normal form is not supposed to be something pretty. It's just, it gives us some guarantees, which will be useful later on. So then I'm going to say Z0 goes to 0, and Z1 goes to 1. Okay, so those are those, are, uh, those, are those three steps. Uh, now let's get rid of all the... Um, uh, right hand sides which are longer than 3 so 4 we're going to have S goes to excuse me S0 goes to S or Epsilon S goes to Z0 and then I'll say just to make things different I'll say B1 I'll say B or Z1 C or Z1, Z0. Then I'll just define B immediately to be S, Z1. And then I'll define C immediately to be uh, A, Z0. Yeah. Now for A, it's going to go to Z1, A, Z0, but we already have a non terminal for that. So I'm just going to save some time and I'll just say, uh, I'll call it C or uh, Z1, Z0. Then we have Z0 goes to 0, Z1 goes to 1. Okay, so this is what our grammar looks like. All rules are go to, there's no other empty strings, there's no other epsilons besides the start symbol. All rules go to a terminal, no epsilons. All rules have exactly, at most, two non-terminals in them, and there are length two. Uh, this is in Chomsky normal form. It was actually a relatively short example to the kind of things that you could see. But it actually, it, applying the rules can be very difficult, because you might have to apply this one, and then applying this rule might undo some other rule or something. So if you have a slightly more non-trivial grammar, this actually becomes very messy. But converting a grammar to Chomsky normal form is not a priority for me, like some things are. But the fact that there exists 
every grammar can exist in Chomsky normal form. So I can say things like, oh, uh, I'm trying to prove some fact about context-free grammars. Let the grammar be in Chomsky normal form. And then I know every rule has that form, and then I can assume certain properties which make the proof simpler for other things. So that's why this is uh, power. Similar how I didn't care about how big the uh, DFA was for simulating an NFA. I just cared that it was possible. It was exponential and blow up, but uh, it, was, it was more about the possibility. Now I've shown you how to do it. Let me explain to you why uh, we do it. So there's, I'm going to present to you two problems, sort of, uh, why this is simple. So let me do that now. Now let's use Chomsky normal form in a useful way. So we'll prove this fact. If uh, x has length n, the, and uh, g is in uh, CNF form, and uh, x is produced by this grammar, Uh, then x takes exactly 2n minus 1 productions. So how do we prove that? So let's say like x uh, is like x1 through xn. Well, because we recall in Chomsky normal form, we have rules only of the form a goes to b, c, or a goes to a goes to a. All right, so each of these non-terminals must have come from exactly one terminal. So we had uh, n non-terminals. Uh, so. Before this step, we went something like uh, x1 dot 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 xn capital, in, and in n steps, we went to x1 dot 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 xn, right? Now, we have a string of n non-terminals. How did we get to n non-terminals from one non-terminal? Well, at most, at each step, we remove one non-terminal and add two. So we say remove one uh, not in terminal add two. So what is that? Plus two minus one equals one. So at each step you add, add at most one non-terminal. Because you start with one non-terminal takes you n minus one non-terminals uh, productions to add to get to n non-terminals. So takes n minus 1 productions. So what I'll say we go from s, and then I'll do the star, which means it takes there's multiple productions, and this takes n minus 1. Then we go to a string of all non-terminals, uh, and then we go to the string of all terminals, which is our string that we produce. And so this takes n, this takes n minus 1, because we start with 1, right? So this takes n minus 1 plus n, which is equal to 2n minus 1. So it doesn't say that it takes at least, or at most, n minus 1, 2n minus 1. It says it takes exactly 2n minus 1. So this gives us an algorithm to check if x is in any grammar. And it allows us to do it uh, do it efficiently. So we just simulate the grammar uh, for two n minus one steps, right? And we produce all strings of length n. And we just check if x is among them. We have to do it this way because a grammar is sort of a, a very generative object compared to like a DFA. To check if something is in a DFA, you just have to 
to check if something is in the DFA, you just have to run the DFA on the word, and it'll tell you yes or no. This will tell you what's in it. This is not going to tell you things that are not in it, right? It's going to like, it's like from the outside, excuse me, from the inside out, instead of like from the outside chopping and cutting it up or whatever. You're just sort of, you're sort of like building up the string, right? And that makes it difficult to determine uh, if a certain uh, letter is in a language. And to that advantage, grammars have this disadvantage, actually, right, compared to the other structures we've studied. So that's one reason. That's one uh, advantage of uh, Chomsky normal form. Next, I'm going to do an example of a problem uh, where Chomsky normal form w would be useful for us. Okay, now let's move on to a different but interesting problem. If uh, G is in uh, CNF form and uh, let's call V little v, the size of the number of uh, non-terminals. And if there exists a string which needs uh, at least 2 to the V productions, then uh, the language generated by this grammar is infinite. So, first thing to notice is, right, we have Chomsky normal form, so everything looks like this. Either A goes to two non-terminals or to a single terminal, and then we're done. So what that means is, <coughs> what it means is, is our parse trees are all binary trees, right? So we have, like, maximally like this or something, right? But the only time we don't a child a parent who doesn't have two children is when it's a terminal and then we're like done with it. So uh if the parse tree has depth n, uh then it has uh two to the n minus one at most internal nodes, right? So following that, uh, if G uh, generates some, some string X and it takes, it, there's no way to do it shorter than, uh, than 2 to the V um, I'll say it generates X in uh, 2 to the V productions. Uh, then the then the parse tree uh, must have a depth of at least uh, uh, v plus one. So then we have uh, v plus one variables in our uh, uh, non-terminals in our depth, but we only have uh, v non-terminals. So by the pigeonhole principle, some uh, non-terminal is repeated. So what that means is internally we have something that looks like A goes to B and there's, you know, who knows what there is. There's some rule like that. And then there's some other rule that B goes to A or something, right? So what that means is we have a sort of recursive structure. Anytime A can go to B, B can go back to A, and then we can sort of repeat. So this means that we can produce length, uh, strings of arbitrary length. So it, the language should be infinite. What's interesting about this question is not the result. But the argument, the result is that, you know, a language is infinite. Well, most of the languages we care about are infinite. In fact, all regular languages, I mean, all finite languages are regular, right? So you, what you do, how do you make a, a, a DFA for a finite language is you just build the binary tree of it, all right? How do you make the 
So we we only care about the languages really that are infinite. There are infinite regular languages and there are infinite uh, context-free languages. So, but the the proof idea here is something that's guaranteed to us from Chomsky normal form. We not we might might not be able to make these kinds of guarantees if our grammar was uh, not so nice. Okay, I just want to finish up and say that uh, there are more normal forms with Chomsky normal form. There's something called Bacchus Nar form, which I think is more used in compilers. There's something called uh, Gribach normal form as well, and those have uh, very different sort of structures. But they're the same idea is that you convert the grammar into these forms. Uh, that have rules that always look like a certain thing that gives you some guarantees. These are important for certain algorithms that use grammars, like for compilers and things. You know, you want to go bottom up, maybe you, you can do things like that. There's something called the CYK algorithm, which uh, re relies on this.